Hi ladies. Some of my students have been asking about things that they can do to accessorize their dresses and change their accessories, change the handling of the wrist, maybe the necklaces, the skirts, different hemlines. Some of them who sew, some who would like to learn, and some just want to change a dress. They may have a smooth dress and want to wear it for standard and are looking just for ways that they can economize on that and maybe add some floats or add something on the wrist. So it's a big topic. I thought today we'll just look at a few different things in skirts. I have some skirts that I've made that I can change out the bodices so that I can get a lot of different use and look like it's a new dress all the time. And I will show you a little bit of a method here for burning flowers. I make a lot of fabric flowers. You can find lots and lots of instructional videos on how to make satin roses and so on. So we won't cover that here. But I will show you uh, dyeing fabric, dyeing gloves, and these are the burning flowers that we'll look at, burning petals and making nice flowers. If you're making dresses or skirts for your daughters, then if they're in the preteen or junior division, there's very strict rules on what the girls can wear and how the dresses can be trimmed. And in fact, they're in certain levels and syllabus levels, they can't wear any trim at all. So you have to check the neckline. The hemlines, it's all very strictly enforced. So just for some thread and ended up with this yummy fabric. So from here I'll make a skirt. Picked up the lining or underskirt fabric in the same eggnog color. And this is the pattern that I'll plan to use for the skirt. I may alter that some, but this gives me a good idea of how much yardage I need and a good jump off place for the skirt. I'll cut the skirt at the hip line instead of the waist. Uh, one is a Latin or rhythm skirt made without a pattern and then these two ballroom skirts were made from a pattern. This was where I jumped off from taking that skirt and that wasn't full enough. I wanted the trumpet bottom but there wasn't enough fullness, so I put some godets in, and I'll take a look at what those are. So I added some gores in here. There's to the make pie piece with a godet that will make the bottom of the skirt much fuller. This is for the next skirt that I'll be working on in blue, and I'll show how that goes into the seams. So here on the white one, I bought this fabric from uh, Joann's. Fortunately, we still have a few local fabric stores where you can go and look, see how things hang, and I love the rosettes. So here I'll pull out, see if you can see that pie piece. Kind of difficult to see. Right here is the seam to see, which is the magic of this beautiful fabric, but along here, going to a point and coming down is the pie piece that gives this fullness to the bottom. So I stitch the dust down and right where it would flare out, I just sewed it to there and then I sewed the pie piece for the godet into that section. Both of these skirts have two layers underneath a lining skirt, and I did the godets in a chiffon, like, like a twinkle chiffon. And both of these are done with the horsehair braid. This is the three inch horsehair braid, and you can get this in different widths. You could cover it with fabric. I like the airy effect of showing it. So I left mine open and did both layers so that I get the same curl. Underneath the white one is a nude layer. And then this is a double layer of tulle on the good days. This camellia was a beautiful flower that I found in a wedding shop and you can purchase 
these little pearls also in most sewing shops. So I use that on the bottom of the dress here right as the skirt flares out. And then I have one also on the back of the dress. And here I've used a little bit of the horsehair braid to give an, another special effect there and line that on the end with lace and and sewed the pearls which is what I have around the waistband I have a, a very nice quality wedding lace with hand sewn pearls up the, the skirt you can see the underskirt I'm scaring the birds <laughs> The black skirt, now this underskirt needs pressing. It's been stuffed in a, a bag, but you can see here I use two different fabrics. Uh, more of a lining fabric and then this sort of twinkle chiffon. But the same fabric could be used and you can do multiple layers if you're industrious and you want more fullness in your skirt. The top is wonderful, of course this fabric never wrinkles. Now here's a, a close look at these rosettes and I trimmed some of them from the scrap fabric and put a backing on them of felt so that I could use them as a feature at the waistband so we'll take a look at that. So there's one of the rosettes cut from scrap fabric and then I've used more of that wedding lace that was white and I dyed it black and then I've done some hand beading around the waistline. The back and this bow or this fabric flower here that's made from blanket trim, satin blanket trim. And then you can see the, the lace with the beads. Now I did more beading and I did some large beads on the back where we don't have any concern about losing the beads or getting stuck on the gentleman's coat. So I was more elaborate Zipper on underneath. the back. And, and then there's the felt backing with the snaps so that the flower there hides the zipper and the fastening on the back. And you can see how beautiful and elegant this fabric is by itself. It doesn't need any stones. This skirt I made without a pattern, and this is more for Latin, could be used for belly dancing, also for rhythm. Did the stoning down the edge. It's a fairly straight cut skirt with a circle on the bottom. Also needs pressing right now. It's got a very bare leg, and that can be worn with a bra top or a bodysuit and a rhinestone belt. This bottom is done with fishing line to give it the curl and that's something we'll look at in another video. Very easy type of float. You can just do ribbons or you can do ribbons with flowers. I found this again in a wedding supply and it's hanging from gloves. I bought these online. I have one plain and one hanging down, which is the same handling I plan to do with the blue ones. Now I have on another type of a glove, fingerless glove, and these are old and they're, they're not as white anymore, so these I may dye black or another color to use on gloves as that an I accessory. Found online. So the black ones here I can wear with the black skirt and bodice. And I have some other 
different accessories that I can change that out. Here are some more blue gloves. Here are white ones, which I could dye or handle them differently. And then here's a beautiful pair also to be worn with a white dress if I'd like to change my accessories. look here at the results of the dyeing. This is the lace. And when it's laid on the dark fabric, we'll pick up the blue, darker blue, even more. So it came out just beautifully. We use this on the waistband, or actually more on the low on the hip at the top of the skirt. Now these gloves were actually bought at a thrift shop for a number that we were doing where we were wearing 40s style clothes. I think they were about a dollar and they were light blue and they have dyed perfectly into the dark blue. that I've made to wear with different dresses and I just keep these unless someone wants to purchase it with a dress. I've had this white set for a long time. If you like a more vintage and unique look than just buying the necklaces and the rhinestones then this is a nice way to go if you have the patience to sit there and do it. These are done with a uh, wedding applique, lace, and backed with bias tape, and then all hand-sewn beads. And I'm using mostly plastic beads here. I do have some glass, those small teardrops are glass, pearls, and then the rhinestones in between. Now these I can wash. I know because I made them myself and I know which glue I've used a fabric glue that you can wash. So you don't automatically want to wash something if you don't know what kind of glue that's used. Your stones may all come off. Definitely I don't wash anything that's dyed. So these colored ones are all wedding applique lace once again and I've dyed them to match the different dresses. That's a handling for the wrist. Then we have a, a wrist piece and a very vintage looking necklace that my bear is wearing as a tiara. And here we have a red necklace, all hand beaded, also done on lace that's been dyed. And then this one is a nude color. I think that if I remember right, I actually dyed this just with makeup. I couldn't find exactly the nude color I wanted and all hand beaded. Now these larger stones, I don't trust to just glue on, I always sew them. And the blue, this is another pattern of lace. It's been dyed. A lot of the beads that you see on this one I bought at Hancock's when they went out of business, I bought all the beads they were selling for half price, all different colors. This one's done on a piece of body stocking with a Velcro way to clip it around your wrist. So that's a whole nother story if we want to look later at creating one of these. This is just to give you ideas or something very unique. I also wear these with other gowns, not just for dancing. 
So there's a satin ribbon made into a rose. I won't show that here. There are so many videos online on how to make flowers out of satin ribbon. So you can just find one that makes sense to you. And then the little lighter blue in the dyeing process, some of these fell off. And I'll use those on the glove. And this I'll hang from the right arm, the arm that's connected to the man's arm, similar to the way I did with the white glove. So you wouldn't have to do gloves, you could also do wristbands and attach flowers or ribbons or lace or feathers. Flowers that I made with the burning or singeing method, and I will show how I did these. You can find, again, lots of videos on how to burn flowers or scorch them or singe the edges. But I will go through that process and then just decorate the center. Now, a lot of people make these with hot glue, and I don't want to take the chance of anything falling off when I'm dancing, so these are all stitched together. And I'll use these probably on the skirt, maybe on the back yeah, of the skirt. saucer. This cottage cheese lid happens to be six inches across, which is perfect for my largest petal. So I will just trace around the edge and make that pattern for just the largest about one. maybe a half inch or so. So I'm taking the easy way again. I'm just going to make my next. There goes down, down a little bit one. more. So here we go. Compass, obviously, that is the easiest way. Each of these is a oh, half inch to quarter inch smaller and getting smaller and smaller as we go. So these two flowers that I have here, one of them was made with seven layers and the other one was made with five and they both look good. So we're making seven patterns for the fabric. So I just used things I had around the house to trace around because I don't have a compass and I can keep these patterns and use them over and over. Never, ever, ever cut paper with your good sewing scissors. This is the brand that my teacher recommended when I was in school for fabric, and it touches nothing else. So we're using the old kitchen Most of the shears. scissors you find in the sewing shops are not really good fabric scissors. These were quite expensive, but uh, they'll be great when we go to cut the tiny little gores that we have to put in here on the fabric that is. Don't let this good pair of scissors cut the paper. Patterns. It will ruin your scissors. And I've made little markings where I'll be cutting the fabric. I'm not going to cut that on the paper. I'll leave the paper round, but that's just to show how we'll cut in with the scissors on the fabric. And that doesn't have to be exact. They're going to curl. You can see here a couple of layers. They'll have irregularities, so they'll look more natural, but those are the, the slices that we'll do in the fabric on each layer as we go. I don't need a lot of flowers. I could probably do more and cut through it easily. So that will give me four of each size of petal. Cutting them with this fabric, four layers was plenty to get the scissors through, but if it was a chiffon or tulle, you could do twice Notches. that many layers. Again, doing all the layers at once. And as we progress through the layers, the notches will be a little bit shorter each time. I don't want to put it right into the flame. Just get the heat to start melting the edges so that they'll begin to curl and finish. So I'll finish Later this bit. after we go around the edges. Then we'll go down the cuts. And after going down the cuts, getting the fabric to shape and pleat by working the heat as if these are petals. 
which should be one for ten your fabric and see how it handles before you cut everything out and start doing that and then you'll start getting your petals when they stack up There you can see the fabric beginning to shape and curl as it shrinks. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven petals in this flower. So I'll stitch that together. use a tiny little seed bead to secure the top there. 